Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum at Cadence Independent Media. Today we are gonna cover variables, expected and unexpected, in getting a good cross stick sound. Um, there's more to this than a lot of people realize and it's something that has come up a lot with even professionals that I know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a topic of conversation for sure. So, we are talking about cross stick sound. Now, I'm sure that there are people that aren't totally sure what this is or some of the terminology gets mixed up. Just to be totally clear out of the gate, cross stick is tip on the drum, bringing the stick down on the hoop on the opposite side. Not to be confused with rim shot or stick shot or, you know, any other kind of shot. So first things first, this sound goes all the way back to the beginning of drum set playing as we know it, jazz music, um, rhythms on the edges of the drums, all the way up to right now on the radio, um, hip hop music, sample based music, all kinds of stuff. And there are a lot of different ways to sort of execute it that are subtly different that actually get surprisingly different sounds. And I've seen it mentioned quite a few times in lesson videos that it's important to get a good one and they'll mention components of it, but they never mention things like how, like how, your hand, how you're holding your hand actually affects the sound because the drum is actually resonating to varying degrees when you do this. And the way that you're sort of touching the heads with your fingers, where on the stick you are, how close to the edge the tip is on this side when you're doing it, um, they all change the sound. And ultimately I think most people want to have a pretty strong authoritative sound when they're doing this because most of the time it's the backbeat of the groove, whether it's reggae music or hip hop or even like swing music and, and you know, hard bop and things like that. So first things first, rule number one, turn your stick around. Now this isn't an all the time thing. This is for a strong authoritative cross stick sound. There are times when you don't necessarily want that. Um, thinking about dance music where the backbeat isn't like central to it, like maybe like Afrobeat and like Fela stuff where it's more of a swirling groove and the snare is not this two and four that's throttling out. If that's what you want, then turning the stick around really helps because you're putting the weight on that end and you're also creating a smaller point on the other end that's touching the drum and deriving the sound that the head's making, the component of the sound that the head is, uh, out of the drum. Just as a quick comparison, here is front ways and back ways. Now I was careful to put the pivot point in the same spot on the head for both of those. They weren't, it wasn't shifted across the drum at all. And you can hear that on the tip side, it's a smaller sound. It's maybe usable for some things, but generally for me, I don't use that very much. Now, one thing that I haven't seen mentioned very much specific to this issue is that when people say always turn your stick around, they're also always playing cross stick across the center of the drum. But if you play your cross stick offset, now you're on the widest part of the stick on the rim again. And this is a different sound than if you do the same thing in the center of the drum because here I'm on the taper and over here I'm on the meat of the stick before the taper begins. So I actually like that sound a lot toward the edge because it's not as aggressive as the fully reversed stick and I don't have to turn my stick around. Now, for me, I play traditional grip 95% of the time, so turning the stick over is not as tricky as if I was playing matched and then had to turn it around again to play regular. But regardless of all of that, that elicits a sound that is actually really pleasant to my ear and for maybe like a bossa situation or like a jazz thing where this fully reversed stick is kind of like, it's a lot to, to deal with and you have to get your height lower. If you just come off a few inches, it's actually a really beautiful sound and the whole volume threshold of the thing just comes down a chunk. Variable number two, your hand when you're holding the stick to do the cross stick is resting on the drum head. And I think that not everybody realized that this is like part of the sound is that we're muffling the overtones from the drum head. Just quickly, here is fingers on the drum versus just the stick on the drum. So 
So the overtones, when your hand is really not touching it, start to get a little wild. You can hear them ringing over, and the sound overall is not as fat. Um, I've noticed a lot of people both doing this, like not putting their fingers on there, and also holding the stick very close to the tip and lifting their hand pretty high off the drum. That still works, um, but it's kind of, it's splitting the difference between the other sounds. So it's kind of up to you which sound you want, how dead you want the drum to sound. Um, but bearing in mind that the higher you go, the more you're gonna have to make sure that those fingers get back on the drum when you drop it down to suppress all of that noise. Depending on the pitch range that your drum is tuned, uh, this will be more or less of an issue. Um, and also, for the record, I'm doing all of this cross stick about an inch away from the opposite side. Um, like, that is to say the tip is about an inch away. Variable number three is this tip location. So my preference, and I mean, I'm not meticulous about this, but my preference is somewhere around like an inch or an inch and a half, something like that over here. Um, mainly just for sound reasons. Um, and also because it just feels like a comfortable pivot point because I can put my hand at the end of the stick and also kind of have my wrist relaxing on the hoop. Um, now I want to show you what happens when you go from about two inches away all the way to the hoop with this tip. Okay, here we go. So that's a broad map of sounds and so i mean they're all good i don't want to talk about good and bad sounds but when it comes to what you want the sound to do for you and where you want it to live in the track or in the show um just a slight awareness of these things makes a huge difference and especially if you're having to switch really quickly you got to be able to jump on that spot and have that sound right away and it takes a little bit of practice but it's mostly just an awareness thing and if you do the first one and it sounds ugh, then move out and then it's good and consistency in backbeats is important you know they don't have to be like microscopically the same but that consistency makes things danceable um it makes recordings really pop and uh even like thinking about um like things like Steve Jordan has said or things specific to like James Brown and funk music where they'll change their location of their rim shot like two is in the middle and four is by the edge to break it up. You can do that with these two. You can do one here and one here, pivot around to different spots. They're all going to be different, but make sure that the sound you're getting is the sound that you want to be hearing. And that, I mean, that's that's the point of all this stuff is making sure that you're not just doing a cross stick because you're like, oh, I'm supposed to play cross stick here. Make sure that you care about the cross stick or the rim shot or the backbeat or whatever it is that you're focused on and actually get the good sound to your ear, whatever that is. And then if the MD or the band leader or the microphone doesn't like what you're doing, make adjustments and learn what those adjustments are going to do for the sound and then you can have all these tools inside of this one little thing that'll just change stuff up and make it interesting. The length of the stick affects this stuff, the diameter, the material, everything. So far, we've been using this stick. Uh, this is a Promark Acid Jazz. This is sort of a middle of the road stick. It's 16 and a quarter, so it's a little longer than a standard 5A. And it's, I think, 551 diameter. Um, so basically like a little smaller than a Vic 5A. It's about the same as a Promark 5A. Um, then this here is a Michael Carvin, and this is 535, 16 inches, also hickory. And this one here is the Zuckerman, the Todd Zuckerman, which is like a Maple 5B, basically, also 16.6 um, diameter. And these all sound different in the cross stick because of the diameter, and in this one's case, also the material. So here's a quick back-to-back. -back. I'm going to do it in what I feel like is the sweet spot with the sticks backwards across the center of the drum, and we'll just do a boom, boom, boom. So much like with backbeats too, like it's not worlds different, but it is different. And for me, I think that a fatter stick gets a fatter sound on backbeats. And the same is true of the rim shot. A fatter stick and also softer wood gets kind of like a warmer one. And a narrower stick gets a sharper one. The hickory is a little more 
punchy than the maple. Um, all totally usable sounds. They all sound great. Um, but bear in mind that like if you've got some like really long or really thick or really skinny sticks, if you're like if you've got like the quest loves or something, the, that's going to change the sound of the cross stick. Not for better or worse. It's just going to be different. And that's something worth noting, um, particularly in recording situations where my preferred size of stick is somewhere between a 5A and a 5B and somewhere close to 16 inches. Um, I don't have like a favorite favorite of all, but I do always make sure to have a pair of very skinny sticks. And I do also make sure to always have a pair of really forward heavy with a larger tip sticks because along with cross stick, they also change the hi-hat on the ride cymbal a lot. And sometimes you're hearing a sound coming back and they're like, I need the hi-hat to be more chilled out. Now, if I'm already playing quiet, I can just get a skinnier stick. Likewise with the cross stick. If it's not sitting right, try us just a different stick. Maybe most talked about variable um, based on things that I've read is the hoop that you're using on the drum. All of this has been with a die cast hoop. This is a Tama die cast hoop on a maple drum on, a, on the Pearl here. And this is my preference for cross stick if I want that thing to really sail out and kind of dominate things. Though, as you saw, when we moved off center or if you flip the stick around, you can chill it out. Um, but if we do the same stuff on a different drum with a different head and a different hoop, everything changes. So this was coded G1, so 10 mil batter head, standard snare side, and these heads are brand new. We're going to go to... The Supra, which has the original, I want to say, thinner um, triple flange hoops on it, and also has a calf tone on the batter. So let's see what that does. I want to just note also that uh, I didn't try to tune these drums to the same pitch or anything like that because I specifically want this to be like I was playing that drum and now I'm playing this drum, almost like it's at a session or something. And I hit that one and it's like it's too aggressive or too loud or something like that. So I'm trying this one instead. So to my ear, with this darker sounding head and this darker sounding hoop, uh, this is a little more integrated sound. It's not as loud. It's not as aggressive. And it might make more sense in the context of like a lighter feeling track or if I was trying to do something that was more like in a like a meters vibe or an old James Brown kind of thing, which isn't to say that they didn't use die cast hoops. It's more, it's, this is strictly an ear thing. Like that sounds right to me. So maybe that's what I would pick instead. And with this drum, I also want to address a little side thing, which is how should we have the wires on or not? Um, this is totally up to the player's preference. If you do cross stick with the wires on, the wires are part of the sound in the same way that if I kick the bass drum, the wires are part of the sound. Um, and when I play some music that has a more um, hand drum oriented kind of like heritage behind it, sometimes I'll turn the wires off. A lot of times I'll turn the wires off because I'm not imitating cross stick on a snare. I'm imitating like hitting the side of a wooden drum or something like that, you know. So when you turn the wires off, it gives it a completely different character. So that's a lot to digest about cross stick, which is sort of like a side thing that um, I, I guess I haven't really seen much material really um, zeroing in on. Um, but suffice to say that all this stuff is just tools to use, sounds to use. Um, I don't think it's worth delving too deep into the drum itself with cross stick. Um, obviously, it's going to be different from drum to drum, but I think that it's um, not... A huge part of the difference. The only thing I will say about that is that getting a good cross stick sound on smaller snare drums because of the ratio of a 16 inch or 16 and a quarter stick to a 14 inch drum starts to get a little bit trickier. 13s, it's doable. 12s, it starts to be difficult to get that, like the sounds we're getting here out of those things. Um, which is why, like maybe you've seen those risers, the wooden risers that you screw on to get that. That is both for getting a great sound and also for being able to get a great sound on a drum where maybe you, you just don't have the leverage and the distance away like to get the sweet spot of the stick on there. Um, so keep that in mind too if you're trying to do something that's really cross stick heavy. And uh, yeah, we'll just play you out with a couple of styles here that sort of are cross stick specific. 
So as always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and click that little bell button down there. Make sure that you get your notifications when we post new videos. And uh, if you're doing a lot of cross stick in your music, I'm always curious um, what people are doing with these sorts of sounds. And uh, let us know in the comments.